my shoes, don't my, don't my shoes, don't my, don't my shoes, don't. Hey, I have no idea what I was just saying. Quarter, what was that, man? I don't know. Romanian, number one song there, I guess. I don't. Know. Anyway, this is the after fight afterthought for the uh, Lucien Boutet uh, Jean Paul Mendy fight. And in this, I go over the before, during, and after the fight for both fighters, and uh, you know, kind of give a little round by round in there too. And I start out with the uh, after fight, which is the winner. Then I go to the afterthought, which is the loser. Well, in this after fight, obviously, it was uh, Lucien Bute was the winner, convincingly, in this fight. Um, he's on a roll, six knockouts in a row. Um, this is a must win, but it's also kind of a catch fight for him. Uh, must win in the fact of if he wins, he's going to get, you know, he's going to fight the winner of the Andre Ward Carl Franch. I mean, everything is going to line up. The stars are going to align. Moon's going to show up. You know, he's, you know, it's going to be on a world world stage. I can't afford to overlook Mendy, I think. You know, he's, Mendy's, you know, like 29-0, 29-0-1. You know, he's uh, not a lot of experience fighting top southpaws, so that always factors in. Maybe there's going to be a little awkwardness, you know. Over on Jean-Paul Mendy's side, is he overrated? Is he protected? I mean, these are some of the biggest questions coming in. I mean... His biggest win was off a guy that, you know, knocked him down. So, and that was Bika, and that was a, by disqualification. So, you know, you kind of got to wonder, you know, the quality of opponents that he's fought. Uh, this is only like his second world-class fight, and he's fighting the top southpaw in the world. So that's going to make it rough for him just because you're a southpaw. doesn't necessarily mean you translate over and can just, you know, say, yeah, I can fight a southpaw. You know, it doesn't happen like that. Uh, this is a true test, and we're going to see if he's worth the hype. Now, going into the fight, uh, in round one there, they were feeling out with the jabs, uh, mostly by uh, Bute there. You know, jabs, jab and hooks by Bute landing to the body as well, going back and forth. Occasionally there was a left landing by Bute in there. Slow, tentative fight going on. Nice one-two by Bute, a uh, hook to the body by Mendy, a jab by Bute. And I gave Bute the round easily in there, and you could see the speed difference. You could see the ability difference in there, and it seemed like every time Mendy would decide to throw a left hand, he, he was pulling back before he even threw the punch. So he was more worried about getting hit as opposed to actually hitting Butte. Or Butte. However you want to say it. Um, round two was a faster start there. He had Butte pumping the jab, uh, counter hooks by Butte. It was like he was timing them the whole time. Nice left by Butte lands. Uh, Double jab by uh, there was trading jabs in there. Another hook to the body by Mendy. Whenever they would get close or tie up, that's when Mendy would really try to hit him. But it wasn't uh, the punches really didn't have a lot of uh, effort behind him. Uh, you know, hook uppercut left by by Bute, and it was a great combination that he landed on there. I was banging on the ropes, hook to the body. You know. Uh, and through this, three hooks to the body by, or three hooks, actually, by, uh, by Butte, uh, followed by one, two. Nice counter by Butte, Butte, Butte. you could see it uh, adding up. And uh, Butte, Butte was picking up the pace, landing a lot more when he was letting his hands go. And it seemed that uh, Mindy didn't want any of that, and he's trying to close the gap more so uh, by you know, doing stuff not to get hit. And I know the whole aspect of boxing is to not get hit, but he is hindering himself in such a way that he's not creating any offense, so he's going to get hit more. See what I'm saying? Sometimes your offense is your best what? What? Defense, that's right. And I gave that round to Bute as well. I'm just calling Bute from here on in. It's smoother for me. Of round three, you know, there's jab by Bute, you know, a reaching by Mendy in there. He's just reaching, trying to get in there. Uh, you really see Mendy looks slow. Looks really slow in this round. You know, the jabs and the hooks by Bute hitting. Uh, Mendy hitting in the clinches, that's about it. Nice one-two by Bute again. Jabs by Mendy, hook to the body by Mendy. And all this stuff. Uh, you know, he's the one-twos by Bute, he starts firing off, and instantly uh, Mendy is backing up and trying to get out of the ring. 
I mean, he wasn't trying to get out of the ring, but you could tell he was like, I would like to be any other place but here kind of deal, you know? And, you know, the speed is so lopsided, and you have Mendy is reaching on almost every single shot he's throwing. And I gave that round, a 10-9 round, to Butte as well. Going into the fourth round, you know, you had him, uh, Mendy was throwing, but he was missing badly. And that was pretty much the, uh, the entire fight there. And Butte was starting to counter him, started firing his jabs, making uh, Mendy miss even more so. A nice one-to-one -one by Butte. He starts opening up, hook to the body, throwing uppercut and hooks, you know, lefts, the jabs, the counters, and all that. He really starts opening up, and, and then you have a left land by Mendy, a jab lands by Mendy, and next thing you know, uh, Butte lands a massive one-two on Mendy, and Mendy goes flat down on his face. Mendy was trying to throw that left hand. The problem was, is as Mendy was getting ready to throw it, he dropped that right, got caught, pat, pat, you know, and he was done. Yeah, that left smoked him out, landed right on the button, right on the jaw. Nice, flush, done. But it was the only, really, honestly, it was like the most solid. Uh, it, was a, it was a solid punch. It wasn't one that you think would absolutely, not like the one when Sergio Martinez smashed Paul Williams' face. Wasn't wasn't that vicious. But it still put him out. So you kind of wonder now, you know, about... Uh, Mendy's jaw, and, and you really got to put that into question. Uh, so, going to the after fight there at the end, at the end of the fight, uh, Butte's got to, you know, he's got to fight the winner of the Ward Frotch fight, and then, then all of a sudden you see, and this is after he beats Pavlik, because I do believe uh, Butte will beat Pavlik. I believe he'll beat him soundly. Did I already give my prediction? No, I didn't. You're gonna have to stay tuned. <laughs> and when you look at Jean-Paul Mendy at 37 years old, could this be retirement for him? Will he give Bika a rematch? This seems about the only chance he's got at really getting a top-level fight. Anyway, uh, and it's got to, got to have to be someone willing to travel. Someone's going to be willing to travel to France. Maybe a Mide uh, Boedla? Maybe? Uh, Caroline Balze? You know, you know, those kind of guys, you know that are real close, that are either in France or Germany, some, somewhere close where, you know, not going to be too far out of their element. Because, you know, I don't see any of the top guys that are going to go to France, and I definitely don't see Mendy wanting to travel outside of France to go, you know, he traveled to Romania to go to sleep. So, you know, you'll have that. Anyway, that's my After Fight Afterthought. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and be my friend. Be Eduardo's friend. I have to start him a Facebook page or something, you know. And, uh, you know, uh, let me know what you think about the fight, what you thought, and, uh, yeah, that's about it, all right? Wait, well, hey, if you, uh, watched my prediction for this fight, you would know that I picked, uh, Butte, Butte, to win by knockout in the sixth. If, uh, that's a bad prediction, then you don't know what a good prediction is. All right, anyway, this is Big Regu. I'm out.